Well, hello, and welcome to my studio. I'm Tim Packard. And I'm Brooke Cormier. And today is a very special episode that I'm really excited uh, to bring you in our mentorship series. So this is the end of one full year since I've been mentoring Brooke. And we're going to kind of recap the whole year, uh, just give away a, a little bit of the info. It has been a phenomenal year. Yes. Uh, way, I don't know about you, but way beyond where I thought and hoped you would get to in Me a year, <laughs> both in terms of your development as an artist, um, your, your brand, uh, how many people you're reaching with social media, how many paintings you're selling. Um, and just is the, you know, the, the proof is in the pudding now that this is what you should be doing. Yes. <laughs> so uh, stick around and uh, we'll get into all the details of that. So it's been quite a year. And yes, it has. <laughs> let's take people back to last October. And what actually, why don't you tell the story of kind of, you know, back in whether it was April or May when you told your parents, I've yeah. got some news for you. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, I was graduating um, the University of Guelph for landscape architecture. And that's when I was kind of deciding, you know, I feel like this is the time for me to really pursue my art career since I haven't jumped into a full-time job yet and this is something that I'm really passionate about and that I really wanted to make work. So I kind of, yeah, talked to my parents and told them this and they were more or less supportive of me. They, <laughs> I know like as a parent it would be hard for, to hear after spending so much on my education to become a landscape architect that I'm going to kind of switch gears and go a different route. But, um, you know, I kind of told them and myself that I was going to do this for a full year and just give it my all and see like where I would end up at the end of the year, track my progress. And I said, you know, if if it doesn't work out then I can always just get a job in landscape architecture and if it does work out then great I'm gonna keep going with it and yeah so this is marks the one year mark since I made that decision and I'm really happy with how everything has gone and that I'm gonna keep on this track and I'm not scared or anything about the future anymore so it's yeah. nice when you quit going to bed thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Yeah, right? yeah exactly. <laughs> it, it took me five years to get to that point. So mm -hmm. the fact that you've done that in a year um, is amazing. And I'll just kind of remind people how you and I ended up connecting. Mm -hmm. So I and my wife were members at Whiteville Golf Club and Brooke's mom and dad are members there too. So I initially knew your mom and dad before you. Yes. And then as you were doing things in art and we did a couple of prints for you last year, mm -hmm. that's how you and I met. Um, and we talked a few times and I think that maybe put the, the seed in, in your mind head, about, yeah. gee, maybe I could do this. Yeah. Um, I, I remember we were playing golf, so a little over a year ago, um, and your dad was not happy and he was not happy with me because <laughs> he said, I remember he said, Brooks was talking to us. She wants to pursue her art career. Yes. And he's just... And he's like, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember thinking, I, I said, you know, for a lot of parents, you know, I'm, having done what you've done and you're about to go into, the, into your career as, a, as an architect, I would say, you know, maybe focus on that and do this as a hobby. But I've been impressed enough already with your, not only your ability, but your work ethic and your business sense that had already kind of shown itself that uh, like I said to him, no, I think she should do this. And that's when, I, I don't know, it just came out of the blue. I said, I will mentor her mm -hmm. um, and said, I will only do it though on the condition that we do the videotapes of this, yes. um, or I guess it's digital video now, so that everyone can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. um, because I've always been a strong believer. I shouldn't say always, but since, since I've achieved the success I have, I believe 100% that it's not about talent where you, when you're starting out, mm -hmm. it's like talent is just where you are now mm -hmm. in terms of your skill, um, your technical knowledge, your creativity. Um, but getting great talent isn't something you're given. It's something you acquire. And the whole, the thing that I have been just so strongly believing was that if people know how and what they should be doing, if you give them the direction, um, and they provide the effort that it, it is not only possible, but almost a certainty that someone can have a successful career and make a decent living as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
I, and I've actually been looking and thinking, oh, I would love, I actually hoped one of my boys <laughs> would be that. But yeah. they, you know, again, art is something either you're bit by the buggy or not. Yeah. And they're not. So I was really excited about this too, to say, okay, well, let's see what can happen with someone who already has. Now, for those of you out there watching, don't get us wrong. I mean, Brooke didn't study art in university or anything, basically just self-taught and hobby painter but you yeah. you did it a lot yeah and you are all you already had a very high skill set when you started but then the question is what do I do with this mm -hmm. exactly um, need but, guidance <laughs> yes um, and so I am just more than thrilled with how this year has gone and um, me too yeah and I think even your dad last time I talked to him because every time I would see Brooke's dad at, a, at the golf course or at a dance you know at some point he would stare me in the eye and go are you sure yeah. <laughs> are you sure and I think now he's sure yeah too. so yeah. Um, that's really good <laughs> So let's go back to, so when we started last year, you kind of took the summer off mm -hmm. and you did a bunch of traveling, you were in Germany, but it was really in uh, like late September, I think, when you got when started I, yeah. and we Buckled had our down. first meeting. And mm -hmm. so do you remember that? Remember I gave you a bunch of challenges in terms of stepping outside of your comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about that. So yeah, basically at that time I was completing commissions, but also there was this whole aspect of me trying to find my unique voice as an artist. and. How I was always, you know, staying in the realm of rea like realism. Super high realism. Yeah, and and these assignments that you were giving me were kind of pushing me outside that and getting me to experiment and stuff. And so, yeah, just looking back on like the first video we filmed from there, it's just basically, yeah, I was completing these and then doing a bit of commission work, and then from there, um, I entered my first juried show, which was in. Um, April that was the Oshawa Art Association jury show and um, I entered three pieces into that and then got all three of them accepted which was like a really big thing for me and then one of them actually ended up um, winning the People's Choice Award which was also that was like my first award I think I was more excited yeah. than you because I, I think I remember telling you at, the, at before the show I said I think you've got a this chance at winning an award one, yeah. and I said wouldn't it be cool because that was also my very first award mm -hmm. was in was the Oshawa the Art one? Association show like 20 some odd years ago yeah exactly and then I ended up selling two of the paintings like while they were in the show and um, yeah and then since then I kind of like started building up my inventory because we had had that um the episode that we filmed about setting my goals and that a bunch of my goals were going to be to you know enter um these art festivals and other jury shows and and whatnot and then I thought you know well I don't even have that many paintings I need to start painting to like build up my inventory for these shows and then that's kind of when I got into like the, the food paintings and yep. that was like a fun project that I had going on in the summer. And then I kind of took all of that and it was, and then I'm looking at my fir very first art show was the Stouffville Art in the Park. Um, and that was uh, like, if I look at my tent, it, yeah, again, it probably looked like 10 different artists were displaying yep. their work in there because it was just all over the place. But um, that was really fun and a great first experience for my first art festival and I ended up winning the People's Choice Award there too which was great and it came with like a like a $300 prize which I was really thrilled about and um, yeah and then since then okay, I, I just want to but I just want to stop you for a sec here because yeah. so, we've already kind of jumped ahead to April oh. <laughs> but but what's but you so you also did a few things though at, at uh, you already had an Instagram account, right? Yeah. But you only had a couple hundred followers, or yeah, something it was like that. Really, yeah. And you created so between kind of our meeting in October and until April when you were in the OAA show, you created yes. your website, right? You created a, a business page, page on Facebook, mm -hmm. and you started your own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And then and then we had a long talk about social media, and you started diligently posting on yeah. social media with an actual strategy yeah. um, and, and making it a part of your business plan. Yeah, exactly. But from kind of October till April, you pretty much just had your head down and were working. Yes. You didn't have, it's not like, you know, you started out in that first month and we're doing 3,000 in sales or no. 4,000 in sales or whatever. <laughs> not even close. You were just doing the work 
and and building on that social media and getting in it's like basically you're just doing the habits mm -hmm. that you that you needed to get into mm -hmm. but it wasn't really and so that was about five six months of that and then in april that's when things started to pop yes so, the ball was rolling so you won the you, you won the award at the oaa show the people's choice award which as far as i'm concerned that's the most important one if you want to be a professional artist selling your work because mm -hmm. that means more people there like your work than anyone else's and if they're going to get out their wallets to pay for your work that's what you want yeah um and so you, you had the oaa award you did the art in the park and that's when you started, because up until then, a lot of the commissions and things you were getting, they were from family and friends, right? Yeah. Or referrals directly from someone who had yeah. purchased your work. People who knew me, yeah. But then, it was around April, May, that with the, the exposure from just, just the two shows mm -hmm. and the social media, you started getting inquiries just out of the blue from yeah, people who were... people who I yeah. didn't know. Mm -hmm. So then tell me about that and how that started, because you didn't even know... Like, how do I, how do I accept payment for this? Yeah, exactly. Do, that was a big learning process too. But, um, yeah, so these, and also just getting, getting, um, commissions and stuff from strangers was really encouraging because it's not just like, oh, you know, it's just it's like easy to my aunt grandma. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like the fact that like strangers were starting to want my work and everything that was like, you know okay, that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, they and really then, mean it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, you know, had to, um, I was constantly updating my website and I had like posting these commissions on it and posting like my like original works and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was just like, <laughs> yeah, it just kind of happened. Just so. And then you did the Oakville art in the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and you started, I guess, what, when was it you started doing the food paintings? So that was, um, I had the food paintings actually for the Stouffville Art in the Park, which was in um, June, I believe. So you or maybe it was late May, I'm pretty sure. So you sure. started those in the spring. Yeah. In the spring started kind of focusing on doing. Yeah, the food things. And that was, and then I also had like the Kensington Market Art Fair, which was also, I brought like all of my work there but it was the majority like food stuff and then in july is when i made like my biggest painting yet which was the algonquin park island one um and then that's the one that kind of like really like kick-started my social media like audience it was um, that one went viral on Facebook somehow and um, you know I was I had like I think like 10,000 likes and stuff and I was getting so many comments and then and then somehow somebody posted that on reddit and it made it to the front page of reddit and then like from there it was like I had been keeping track of my following yeah. from month to month and on Instagram I had 1700 followers. So that was, and that was good, right? You'd gone from a couple hundred to almost 1800 yeah. in the space of about six months. Yeah, six months, exactly. And, and so I just want to mention to people too, if if you haven't seen Brooke's Instagram, and we'll put the uh, the uh, URL up on, the, up on the, the screen here, you need to go check it out because you are probably probably the best that I've seen in terms of an artist in Thanks. in the but the, but so like your work is great but the creativity that you show in in your posts and mm -hmm. how you set them up and it's not I mean I could do much better we just kind of here's me and my painting but your Instagram posts I'm always kind of calling Diane or Cameron's attention to it look at this check this out like it's <laughs> it's that's that's a big part of the thing too so if you put kind of the great art um, up there as well as that creativity with the actual painting mm -hmm. it, it can create that whole double whammy and I guess the other thing we sh I just want to talk about is the whole uh, authenticity because yeah. we talked about that early on that you know for you on your social media on your social media it's like there's no fronting or posing about something you are that you're not it's, it's like I am right out of university brand new at this and I'm yeah I'm starting this journey and if you want to come along with me come along yeah. and it's like boy if people bought into that mm -hmm. right Definitely. so so I think it was I think it was really great even to grow from a couple hundred to 1800 in that in the course of, time. of like half a year but yeah. then you went from 1800 to 18,000 in a week 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I was going, oh, good for you. Oh, good. Oh, my God. Look at that little bugger go. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. And then and then it's just gone. You just hit 40,000 yeah, Instagram just, followers. Yeah, so 40, for you people 000. out there, that's in a year, yeah. basically, from 100 to 40,000. Yeah. Uh, and that does not happen by accident. So, no, again, no. it's a testament to, I think, your ability to storytell your journey, the quality of your art, but also the quality of your your foot photography and the creativity so mm -hmm. and then that has just caused yeah, things to go bananas yeah right? definitely yeah since um i think so in august that was um when the reddit thing happened or at the end of july august and then august was like my most successful month like yet it was just crazy i couldn't even believe it like the month before i think i made maybe like a thousand dollars and then August was like $7,000. It was just like a huge jump because because of this like Reddit post I had like so many people visiting my website and I was selling all of these like original paintings that were just kind of like sitting in my room, you know, I was waiting for them to sell eventually. Well, you, yeah, you were selling stuff that you hadn't even ever had exhibited or you'd exhibited no, it yeah. once. And, and even, um, you know, even the little like assignments that you had given me, just, you know, a little nine by 12, like they're all Rutenberg, gone, right? Yeah, like <laughs> they had, all of those sold. And I, I was just baffled because I was like, oh, I'll put them up on my website. But not that I have like too much hope, you know, but then, yeah, the August was just crazy because there was such a high volume of people like visiting my website and then buying works. And that's when, that's when I really had to ask you about like shipping because that's when like people from you know Chicago and like uh, New York and Arizona were like oh like we'd like to have a piece and so it was just yeah I had to learn it's, yeah, all it's, about it's like, that yeah it's like it's like it's careful what you wish for yeah right? exactly. and I'm sure people at home are going oh I wish I had that problem but it is a problem when you're yeah, having all of this stuff coming at you to, like I everything that's happened to you in a year, it took me six, seven years to to achieve. And on the one hand, that was, you know, it was frustrating that it took that long, but at least you have time to, to kind of get, <laughs> like to adjust to this next thing one at a time where you're getting things coming at you, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. And then you start publishing your work. Yes, exactly. So, and then the prints and everything. So now so you're doing prints a... and limited edition prints mm -hmm. and, and Hannah and Bella's G Clays. Yep, all of that. Yeah, I know. So, and then that was also like a whole other aspect to the business that, you know, I had done prints before, but yeah. that was just kind of like, I don't know, like a little project for Selling me. to people on your cars. Yeah, exactly, or, exactly. Yeah. Now this is just like taking... Selling you know, to people around the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like shipping things now to like Calgary and, and stuff like that. So that was a whole learning experience. And I still feel like I have a lot to learn about yep, you're, that, but. You're certainly getting the crash course in it in, yes. in a good way. Yeah. Um, and so then I guess the, uh, in, in terms of how this year's gone, I guess the big thing that's coming up is you're going to hit 30,000 in sales. in sales yeah so then you're gonna which for those of you out there for those of you not in Canada that's kind of a huge thing because up until 30,000 we don't have to charge sales tax uh, but as an artist once you hit 30,000 in sales then you have to start charging the harmonized sales tax mm -hmm. um, which is in one way it's kind of a, a bad thing because it's kind of like okay now people have to pay more for your work but on the other hand it's kind of a badge of honor mm -hmm. um, because there's still I would say still probably 90% of artists out there are not at a point where they charge HST because they're not doing 30,000 in sales so the <laughs> fact that you're going to hit that in your first year it's just wow. really incredible. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I did not expect. And this. you're and you're getting some big ticket um, commissions. Yes, exactly. Now, now yeah. yeah, and before I was doing commissions for yeah, like three hundred bucks, and now it's just kind of <laughs> like okay, put now an extra zero on there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so let's talk a bit about that too, because we talked before we started filming about that balance. Mm -hmm. And so tell me what you were talking about. Yeah. Before. So basically I was saying how I'm very happy with the progress that I've made this year and definitely think I'm on the right track and I'm very happy with everything. Um, however, the only thing that I kind of have a bit of regret is just that I don't think that I did such a good job of finding that balance between doing my own work and doing commissioned work, because I think, like now, um, looking at what my inventory looks like right now, first of all, I only have like, I think like five <laughs> original paintings that are left. Um, 
And because the rest of my the work that I've been working on is commissions, which is for other people. And um, yeah, so and commissions are great because yeah. obviously that's guaranteed money and that's kind of what I needed this first year and also to, you know to prove to my parents that I am going to yeah. be making some kind of income um but yeah it's just the whole thing about um finding my unique voice in the art yeah. world and stuff and I feel like I still haven't found it yet and yeah. I'm and the only way for me to do that is to be working on my own work yeah. and I guess um what I was kind of like you know, nervous about was if I was working too much on my own work that like if they didn't sell, then it's just, you know, me not making any money. Yeah. But at the end of this year, considering what I have um, like painted and what has sold, like I'm pretty confident moving forward that like even spending more time on what you wanted. Yeah. And I just want to interject something too. How old are you? 23. 23. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you true. haven't found your own unique voice yet. Yeah. It's like good uh, <laughs> because yeah, whatever, if, if you thought you had, then it's like you haven't even come close to, to looking hard enough. And yeah. also too, because you're so young, well, you've, you've already had a couple of unique things. So your food paintings, mm -hmm. very distinctive. Anybody who saw those would could see you two years later with those would oh that's the same artist yeah, right yeah. and then it's same with the the daisy pieces the same sort of thing mm -hmm. so that's the other thing is patience right because yes. this this is a marathon um so yeah like what you've achieved so far is amazing and that whole balance too i i agree that like going forward you should be spending less time on commissions but mm -hmm. for that first year you know you look at that first six months you only had about five thousand in earnings yes right? yeah exactly <laughs> so those and those 300 400 500 commissions were good because yeah. they were paying for the canvas and the paints that led up to yeah when things kind of took off but uh yeah when you're doing commissions it's that balance between you know doing work for other people where you're basically in product mode. Mm -hmm. You're just, you're not getting any better really. And, and you're yeah. not kind of growing much as an artist, but you're, you're just kind of doing really well with what you have and then doing your own work where you're exploring and trying all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but you still have to pay the bills. Yes. Um, and so <laughs> and that's what the nervous part. For yeah. Me but for this year, I think, I think you're right. I think it's like, yeah, you, you have the confidence now to know that, especially as you start to, cause you're still in that, that, kind of thing of trying different things right mm -hmm. um and i think you'll probably find the same thing that i found because you have a really high skill set um everything you try turns out pretty good decent yeah and people <laughs> will buy it yeah. right like Hopefully. with well that has happened with yeah so, so far. far it has been and, that way yeah. and so then but then the exciting thing be, is that then you get to start focusing just on those things that you're most passionate about, mm -hmm. whether it be subject matter or medium, because mm -hmm. you're painting in oils and acrylics, yeah. or stylistically, whether more tight realism or more kind of loose. And even the whole tight realism, like there's nothing wrong with tight realism. It's just if, if you end up doing that, you just want to make sure it's a conscious choice you've made because yeah. you've tried everything else and said, no, this is where I want to go yeah. or here or here or there, yeah. but it's just the trying everything so that you're making the decision. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I guess from here, the next thing is like, what are your plans for next year? Or have you, have you sat down and made them? <laughs> Well, I think that Mind you, we're still only in November. Yeah, so. I know. So I, I still definitely need to sit down and I want to, um, I want to kind of solidify my goals also for 2018, just because I had some goals like for 2017 and, and achieved those goals and, yeah. and, but there wasn't really any like financial goals in there. Cause I really had no idea what to yeah. expect. And I definitely would not have expected to reach 30,000 this year. So Wow, but yeah. um, for next year moving on, I would like to set some more financial goals and see where that can take me. And also um, the whole thing about um, kind of slowing down on my commissions or yeah. being at least more selective of which ones here's, I'm taking on. Here's a good, here's a good way to um, kind of, when, when things start getting too busy, because that's the thing, when you start out, you, you accept almost any and anything. An, anything and everything whether yeah. it's a whether it's an opportunity to show your work or to do a commission or whatever mm -hmm. um and one thing that when you start getting too busy and you realize you're maybe taking on more than you want or so, so anytime someone comes to you with a proposal 
if it's not a hell yeah, it's a hell no. Yeah. <laughs> because there's those maybes at the beginning, you take all those yeah. and you just get in the habit of saying yes to everything. Yeah. And then you go to do them and you go, oh, geez, I really wish yeah. I hadn't done that or yeah. wish I could charge more. Um, so then it just becomes, if, if there's any doubt whatsoever, you just say, no, not right now. I'm too busy. Yeah, exactly. And then you can all, but always get their information. Mm -hmm. And if and then, it turns out things change and you have more time on your hands, you can always kind of revisit that. Exactly. <coughs> but yeah, so I definitely just want to be more selective on the commissions that I'm accepting and making sure that they're going to be worth my time. Um, and also subject matters that I'm a little more passionate about. Yeah. You know, I've, I've said the no to dog commissions now yeah. i finally put the cap on that um so and now moving forward um i in the new year i'm i'm trying to get all the commissions that i have lined up kind of finished by the new year just so that once I, once 2018 rolls around i'd really You're like free. to start yeah doing like my yeah. own stuff and really like you know, I've been working on the little tiny like three by three canvases and just tiny things now and I really would like to go bigger. Yep. I want to get uh, on big canvases and get back into my oils because I miss them. <laughs> I like opened one up just the other the day smell. and I was like, oh my god, that <laughs> smell. I mean, yeah, so I definitely want to work more like with oils next year and because I really, I mean, I find that I'm so comfortable with acrylics now. Like I think that you know, I've figured them out. I still have more learning to do, obviously. It's never ending, but yep. I feel like I have a very good grasp on them. But oils is just like an entirely different thing that I would really like to explore more and yep. see. And I think that, yeah, so basically 2018 for me is going to be really pushing more on my own work yep. and like seeing what kind of work I can produce and how my audience reacts to it and kind of like going well, with that. Great. <laughs> and I think that probably, that's probably will be a great next episode for us mm -hmm. because I, I do that every year at the end of December, I sit down and make a list of goals and objectives. And there's a real kind of art to that as well. Yes. And we did that with you this year. Yeah, we did. Because, but it, but it's like so there are there are like the objectives which are things that you would like to have happen. Mm -hmm. um, but they're just vague things, mm -hmm. right? But then there are the goals which would be just for example like we did last year with you. Like one of the goals is is to um, start gaining an audience on social media. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, that was an objective. Yeah. Um, and you know, forty thousand was not the target. <laughs> and not that's even just close. Instagram. <laughs> But so that was an objective, but then we looked at, okay, well, goals are things that you can set that are measurable, that you can do, that you mm -hmm. could, and, and the goal then was to be posting almost on a daily basis. Yeah. Exactly. So that every day in the studio at the, at the end of the day, the fallback was you at least post something about what you've done that day. Mm -hmm. And then you started doing the time-lapse videos. Yeah. And then you started doing the little videos and little demonstration videos. And so that's like a really good example of how, you know, the objective is, is to, to develop a social media following. And then the goals are here are the specific things you can do yeah. on a regular basis that will hopefully lead, lead to towards that. that. Yeah. So we can, we'll sit down on our next session. We can talk about it beforehand too. Mm -hmm. And same thing, we'll look at like, what are the broad objectives that you'd mm -hmm. like to achieve next year? And then it's like setting about a plan. Well, what are what are some concrete, specific things we can do and actually kind of, you know, make a list of them and schedule them yeah. that you can do that are likely going to bring you closer to that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It's, I uh, definitely think that that's going to be something that's going to be beneficial to me because I also found that this year I really was didn't have this kind of structured plan necessarily where I was I knew the steps that I needed to take like vaguely but I was still kind of like you know Well plus you were putting out fires. Yes. <laughs> right? Like it's like all of a sudden you got four commissions coming in. You yeah. got you got 150 comments on Instagram to answer. Yeah. Uh, was... You've got all of your your the first I think the first 6 months was fairly structured. Mm -hmm. But then once things took off, you're just then it was just you're just reacting to yeah, it, you know? Yeah, and stuff's exactly. going out the door and it's like how do I ship stuff? Yeah. Like, do I have to charge tax and uh, what about customs? And yeah. <laughs> where exactly. do we get boxes? Exactly. Uh, all boxes. of that kind of stuff. So so, I mean, that, that was great, but I think, yeah, for this year, this year going forward, um, like I am just so proud of you and I have to, I have to say too, this is, 
so I, I do claim some responsibility of this in just terms of, a lot of responsibility. giving you the direction, <laughs> yeah. but it's like I, uh, I was at this um, presentation for the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers on Monday and a fellow that was talking said something that, that so mastery, becoming a master of anything is a matter of effort and direction. Mm -hmm. And so it's like a massive amount of effort in the wrong direction that will get beaten by a little bit of effort with the right direction. Mm -hmm. But I think you have, this year for you has been a perfect example of when you take a massive effort and put it in the right direction because you have worked your butt off this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's the thing too, is like even though all this stuff that's coming is great, uh, if you had given half the effort, you wouldn't even have had half the success because there's a certain, there's a certain point where you hit critical mass mm -hmm. and that happened for you this summer. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't done all of that work in the six months leading up to it, none of this would have happened. Yeah. Um, and then also the other thing about, uh, about having a solid work ethic is that when, when the magic happens, you're already in the habit of spending the time in yes. the studio. Yes. <laughs> so I think that's probably a pretty good note to end on. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Yes. Um, yeah, as, so if you haven't already checked out Brooke's Instagram, Facebook website, then I encourage you to do so. We'll put that info up on the screen. And for those of you uh, who are Brooke's followers, all 40,000 of you, um, if you are interested in the type of advice that I've given Brooke, I have over 100 videos up on my YouTube channel. You can either access my channel or just through Brooke's YouTube channel, I'm on your playlist. Yes, right? yes. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.